Yeah. Uh, you had originally picked Spurs to advance. Yeah. Uh, looking a little dicey now, but tell me, uh, tell me if you're backing your boys here. Um, listen, there, there are a couple of things with this, right? So Eric Dyer suspension. Obviously, Spurs are going to be weaker on the defensive side of things. Hugo Lloris isn't going to be playing in there. We knew this. I think Spurs were very, very fortunate in the first leg. Should have been three nothing. They should have. They should have been smacked. We should be returning to London at this point uh, with Spurs in complete desperation. Uh, they've been playing better when Sun is not on the pitch, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of decision is made on him. Um, but again, for Milan, it depends if Brahim Diaz is playing as well. That's still a question mark. Then De Ketelare would shift back in there, but they return Fakayo Tomori, Ismail Benacer, and Mike Magnan. Mike Magnan looks like he hasn't missed a beat since he's returned. This is an incredible mm. upgrade at goalkeeper. Um, honestly, he's the top five goalkeeper in the world when he's healthy. So that's how that's how big of a difference mm. it is. Benacer, they look shaky over the weekend. To me, that loss was poor, but a stupid penalty from Tomori is all the difference in that. And really the overall, and there was no Rafael Liao. So that's a very important thing to take note in if you were looking at that fixture over the weekend. He's the best player in this tie, in my opinion, outside of Harry Kane. I can understand. I respect him with that, even though he's a chump when it comes to knockout stage football. But that's just <laughs> the point. Um, it's, it's just true. The guy never had a shot on target in a final, and he's played in multiple finals in his career. He's just an absolute loser when it comes down to it. So just really not even going to have a debate about that one. But at the same time, but at the same time, this is only one nothing tie at the moment. Um, Spurs are at home. They do have players who could put the ball in the back of the net. We're nothing incredible in Milan. So it's, it's mm. not like this lead is overly safe. This is the first time we've been in a spot to advance to the quarterfinals since we beat Arsenal all the way back in 2012. So it's been a very, very long time. And for me, I, I just I just like the over two and a half in this. I really do. I think this is going to be more of an open game. There's defensive players uh, missing for Spurs. And again, I think Milan know at the same time, one nothing is not safe. You go on the road with that. You have to have more substance. And Slatan has been back in. He's been getting some minutes. Maybe he's a difference maker with this. I think there's different ways to look at it. Antonio Conte still has a good record against them, but I believe as a manager, he has never gone to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. This would be a first for him. I just don't love it. And Spurs in general, there's still that opportunity to advance. Um, I even think if this one is nil-nil at halftime, Spurs are worth a bet. Um, this one could go either way. I think this is the toughest out of all the four matchups that we discussed uh today because one nothing lead ain't that safe but we'll, we'll see how spurs handle with the pressure it's they're that type of team that would come back and win this one and the whole entire fan base is just going to clamor over it and then they'll get smacked in the quarterfinals and it's just they it think looks that like they're force next week yeah I, listen <laughs> i spurs are spurs so we'll see what happens uh, milan's still a very young team so we have to see if they're capable of of coming out in this moment and going to england and winning that is something that they have not done in a while they have to prove that uh we'll see what happens though but over two and a half at even money is is the main one that i like mm, i i'm not i'm not super confident i'm not confident enough to call the over two and a half um, my bet. I, I, I was leaning towards under three and a half, honestly, because that's statistically that that's where you would lean. But then yeah. I see you go over two and a half, and I'm like, okay, never mind. I'm not. I'm not touching this. Like I'm not. I'm not questioning Martino um, when it comes to betting on his own team. And I know. I know what you're going to say. Um, but I, I agree. This is this is a really tough one to try to predict for that reason because you have just like a historically choking team, and you have a team with Milan that has picked it up recently despite the, yeah. the recent loss. Yeah. But still, it just has, has not been consistent enough for long enough to really keep believing. Like This this was a shock when they won one uh last month. So I'm going a little safer. You can go mm -hmm. Milan or draw um, and over one and a half total goals. You get there at plus 148. That's a really nice number um, for that. two things that, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice number that you, you can get for, for something that you can very easily see playing out there and and i chose the over one and a half i don't instead of both teams to score because again just w when you come to two teams that you don't trust a lot and you have yeah. that one nothing advantage going into leg two and this desperation things like that i'd rather take the over one and a half if it's going to be in that two-legger parlay instead of both teams to score yeah. um but again 
Don't trust either one of these teams. Um, it is dicey, but I also don't really want to bet against you. So that's why I'm going Milan draw plus over one and a half. At plus exactly. And, and, and that's why I was saying thank you right there. I really respect it. Um, <laughs> again, there's just there's so many different things and also uh, different different stuff open up again. I just want to talk about futures just really quick because I think mm-hmm. they matter. It is a wide open tournament. It's a wide open yeah. tournament. I even think if you're looking at Milan, if you look at Dortmund, um, even if Chelsea were to advance or whatever PSG Bayern does, Benfica, Lord. <laughs> these team, these teams have legitimate paths to semifinals because there is a good chance that they end up matching up. We could see an all Italian uh, quarterfinal. Uh, they, again, Napoli. If out of all the teams with the longest odds, I've said this, they were plus one thousand mm. just to win the tournament. They went down to seven hundred. Uh, they they can even move further, and I know they're not playing this week. But just the sheer possibility of what they're capable of doing is still very real. Okay, they mm-hmm. could beat anybody. I think if I if I'm a Napoli fan, the only team that scares me just because of their aura is Real Madrid. But Napoli yeah. can beat anyone in this tournament. They really can. Um, I, I think again, that's just worth a look on a future ticket. If you really like that dark horse stuff, if you like the long odds, because you know, some people are just, they always complain. They do it on the athletics. I are like, yeah, but where's, where's the long odds for like the, the crazy dark horses. It's like, just because you can bet on them doesn't mean you should. And doesn't mean that will happen. <laughs> okay. Like that's just, I'm sorry. Like I, I'm not going to just take a dark horse underdog just because just you want to hit a big payout. That's not the way it always works. Like I don't, I'm sorry. Mm. How many times do you see parody in this competition? 